Hello and namaste to this talk which is called Ego Death, Healthy Ego versus Unhealthy Ego. So first to understand what Ego Death is. Ego Death is when one loses a sense of self. It is our self that creates an ego, the identity that we have the identity that we have built over many years since our childhood starting from the very childhood when you got your name and when we were told that you are a separate being you are a separate entity so that became our identity our name became our identity and then we went to school uh, being a student became our identity then we went to a certain university then we did a job maybe you are doing a job you are working in your company in a post so that post that title becomes an identity you know whatever that title is engineer doctor uh, phd whatever that title is that can become our identity and then our relationships are ident are our I, our identities, uh, you know, being a father, a mother, a son, a daughter, all these are identities. All these are those labels that give us a sense of self. So if someone asks you that, who are you? And especially, you know, let's say, for example, you're going for an interview in a company and the HR asks you, who are you? Then most probably the answer we give is, our name, you know, all these titles, what I am, what family do I have, whether I'm a father, mother, a son. And then what job I have worked in, what university degree do I have, all these things, that's how we describe ourselves. But when ego death happens, it's a process of spiritual awakening in which we realize that all these identities, labels are just things that are given to us by the external world. It is not who I am really. Because if you think about it, our name was given to us by our parents. You know, the university degree was given to us by the university. The job title was given to us by the company. So all these labels are kind of given to us, this is not really who I am, right? These are just labels. But the question is who I am? Who am I really? So when we realize this, we go through a process of awakening in which we, we realize this deeply and we feel that this is not my true identity. I'm, I'm something else maybe. So this is when that ego death begins. And as we go deeper into our spiritual journey, we realize that actually I'm not a single entity. We realize our interconnectedness with everything. We realize that we all are one. We realize that there is no separation. Think about it. We will not exist if there are so if certain things do not exist in this world, you know, there is this ecosystem that works. There is a, there is a natural ecosystem that we have that is very much interlinked. We cannot exist without the plants, without trees, without animals. In fact, you know, it is, it is believed that, for example, if bees go extinct, then even human beings in some time will go e extinct because bees you know, are responsible for pollination, which eventually gives us food. So <clears throat> every, all nature, all human beings, all animals, plants, everything on this planet is interconnected. I cannot exist without a lot of these factors. You know, the, the trees that we destroy, the plants that we destroy, these are what give us oxygen. These are what give us food. The oceans, the rivers that we pollute, they give us water. 
so i cannot exist without you know nature without other human beings as well for example i could not have existed without my mother giving birth to me so we realize the interconnectedness of everything in nature we realize that we all are one and that is when the next level of the ego death happens where we realize that we all are one we are a collective consciousness there is no single entity the single entity is actually an illusion the single entity is actually kind of how i'm conditioned to believe that i'm separate because if you think about it when a baby is born they do not know or they do not perceive themselves as a separate entity but then we as parents we start telling them you know you are separate the word the word i comes into picture i and the name and everything but this i is just a construct right there is there is no i as such i is a label that is given to us so <clears throat> when you when you do meditation for example when you contemplate on this who am i this question and you know there was a famous indian mystic known as ramana maharshi who used to contemplate on this question a lot who am i and as you do that eventually you will not find the i you will realize there is no i in fact the i and this is what ramana maharshi said that the i is the is the root cause of all the problems actually because if i exist if i am attached to this identity of i then i am bound to suffer right because when when i feel pain when something happens to me then i am suffering i is the focus but what if there was no i then who will suffer there will be no one to suffer so as we go deeper and deeper into our spiritual awakening into meditation we realize that this i dissolves you know when you when you connect to if you are a if you are a meditation practitioner you would know that in deeper states of meditation you you lose the sense of self and you feel collective you merge with the universal consciousness you you ex, you feel expanded you feel infinite it is like what rumi said that you are not only a drop in the ocean but you are the entire ocean in a single drop so it is that feeling of becoming the ocean versus be, versus being just a drop and that feeling of expansion and that is what ego death is so the question is then is it wrong to have an ego i would say it is not wrong to have an ego because without an ego also we cannot exist we cannot function as an individual so certain ego is important to have because if i i'm not feeling like an individual how will i function like an individual i can, i just cannot function and then maybe i will be enlightened and someone who is enlightened or someone who uh merges with the collective consciousness someone who says that you know i am i am not an individual anymore it will be difficult for that person to function in the society as as a human being so what do we do then although enlightenment is wonderful you know many mystics have experienced enlightenment but we are talking about more practical living let's accept the truth not all of us are enlightened right so then how do we function in the in the society so what i what i feel is that it is not wrong to have an ego but what we need to be careful about is and what we need to understand is that what is a healthy ego versus an unhealthy ego because ego can ego in itself is not bad but if we use the ego in a negative way 
it can create a lot of problems. And that's what's happening in the world with a lot of people, right? When we talk about individuals who are ready to harm others for their own benefits, when we talk about dictators, when we talk about billionaires who are even ready to harm the environment for their own benefit. All these individuals, when they function from a strong ego, they harm the world. So an unhealthy ego is, is not something we want. What we want is a healthy ego. A healthy ego means that, yes, I'm functioning as an individual, but I'm not harming others. Yes, I'm giving love to myself, but I'm not being selfish. I'm not harming others in the process. So the question then is, how do we develop a healthy ego? How do we first differentiate between a healthy ego and an unhealthy ego? And how do we develop this healthy ego? So to understand this, I will use a system. And I feel the best system to understand the ego is the chakra system of the body. Now, for those of you who don't know about the chakras, that's absolutely okay. This talk is not about the chakras. But I'm just using the chakras as a framework to understand these different types of ego and how to differentiate between a healthy ego and unhealthy ego. Now, for those of you who don't know about the chakras, chakras are the primary energy centers in the body. The way we have physical organs, we also have energy organs, energy centers in the body. And these energy centers, they store different emotions. Um, they, you know, they represent different characteristics of our, of our being. So that's why I'm using the chakra system as the framework to understand these different types of ego we have and how we can differentiate between an unhealthy ego and a healthy ego. Now let's start with the first chakra. The first chakra is the root chakra, also known as Muladhara, which is located at the base at the base of your spine. Now for the root chakra, also there are different types of ego. There are two types of ego for the root chakra. The first one is an unhealthy ego. The other one is a healthy ego. So what is the unhealthy ego for the root chakra? The unhealthy ego for the root chakra is the ego of survival. And the healthy ego for the root chakra is the ego of abundance. So unhealthy ego is survival based ego. Healthy ego is abundance based ego. Now let me explain what does this mean. When we function from survival, when we function from a survival mode, we are in a lack based mindset. If it is, if life is about survival of the fittest, then it is obvious that I will be in a competition with others. And that's what we see on the planet. People are competing with each other. People are fighting with each other. People uh, want to dominate each other. People want to compete with each other. People want to, people are even ready to harm others for their own benefit. So if we are, if we have this survival based mindset, then it is an unhealthy ego to have because when I just want myself to survive, then I'm even ready to harm others for that. And this survival also comes from, the survival mindset also comes from the fear of death. Now, if we go with the mainstream ideology, mainstream science ideology, that, you know, there is no existence beyond this body. If we if we feel that, you know, uh, we will die off with the body, we do not have an existence beyond that, that we do not have a consciousness or a soul or a spirit which continues after death, then I will definitely be in this survival mindset, most probably. Because I know then, you know, that I'm going to die. So better, you know, let's just try to survive somehow because death is something which is not good because I will stop existing after that and maybe death is painful whatever that idea is so when i have that fear of death i will live in a survival mode but the question is can we understand death because once we understand death 
most probably we'll st- we'll stop fearing it because if we look at a lot of people who experience something called near death experiences who you know who are very who who almost die and come back there are many cases of near death experiences when we look at those cases we see that most of these people and almost 98% of the people talk about you know having a wonderful experience in in their near death experience they have a blissful experience there are some cases which in which people have some dark experiences but most of the experiences are wonderful experiences are blissful experiences are experiences of expansion and and love unconditional love and most of these people did not want to come back to their body and in in fact even in the in the buddhist tradition in the tibetan tradition there is this practice of meditating on death in fact gautama buddha when he used to initiate monks into his sangha first he would make them go through uh you know uh med- this meditation on death he would send them for 3 months to a to a graveyard or a or a, a crematorium and he would tell them to meditate on dead bodies for 3 months and then come because he knew that once we understand death once we stop fearing death that's when our liberation happens that's when we are ready for the next level of spiritual journey and you know there is in fact even there are books on this tibetan book of the dead and then there is tibetan book of living and dying by living and dying by soji alin pushe and they talk about how it is important to understand death how it is important to be, become conscious of death so once we do that we stop fearing death because we fear what we don't understand so once we understand death we'll stop fearing it and that's when we can transcend this survival based unhealthy ego and then we we can move into an abundance based ego which is a healthy ego which means that it is not about surviving anymore but it is about thriving it is about thriving now we need to thrive we we just don't need to survive we need to thrive and there is abundance in the universe and that life is eternal you are not only this body you are a spirit you are a consciousness which is infinite and which is eternal and once we get into that abundance based mindset you also realize that you are the creator you can manifest anything you want so then if you get into that abundance mindset you will not try to snatch away things from others you will not try to harm others we won't do that right anymore once i know that i am whole and complete in myself that i have infinite possibilities that i am the creator i can manifest anything that there is abundance in the universe i will not snatch away things from others i will not harm others i will also create abundance for them and i will create abundance for myself so this is abundance based mindset this is abundance based ego which is a healthy ego versus an unhealthy ego of survival based mindset now moving on to the next chakra which is the sacral chakra located just below your belly button it is also known as swadishthana and the unhealthy ego for this chakra is the ego of codependency whereas the healthy ego is the ego of self dependency codependency unhealthy ego self dependency healthy ego now let me explain this our sacral chakra is our connection to our emotions our feelings now when i have codependency when it comes to emotions my behavior is of being dependent on others for my emotional healing for healing my emotions and that's when everything becomes about me right i develop this unhealthy ego i would say that oh i am so sad and i am suffering why why are you not doing something for me why don't you take care of me why are you not there for me 
so we are you can you sense the dependency in this in these statements can you sense the codependency and that's when i just i'm not a good listener but i just want to speak and tell my sad stories to others that's when i practice something called emotional dumping in which i would call up my friend speak to them for you know one hour two hours and just dump my emotions just talk about my own problems and not even listen to them not even con- i'm not even concerned about them and every time i feel emotional i will be dependent i just want someone my partner my friend or someone to be there to listen to me to heal those emotions for me so i am dependent for my emotional healing but when i am self dependent that's a healthy ego to have in which i know how to heal my emotions i am my own healer i can sit with myself in my silence in my solitude and i can observe my emotions and i can heal my emotions i can become conscious of my emotions and i can transform those emotions through my own self healing practices you know be it energy work meditation whatever it is so now i am self dependent now i am not dependent on others because one thing we need to understand is that healing cannot happen someone else cannot heal me it's not possible why because let's say you are talking to a therapist let's say you are talking to someone else about your emotions now what will happen when i'm talking about my emotions i'm functioning from the realm of words and words are connected to thoughts so i'm still in my head thinking but the emotions are feelings which are felt in the body i'm not feeling them so while i'm talking about them i'm just kind of also functioning from my mind i'm not still connecting to my body to those feelings and observing them and becoming conscious of them so it's important to learn to how to heal ourselves with mindfulness with consciousness versus be dependent on others for our healing so the unhealthy ego is the ego of codependency the healthy ego is the ego of self dependency now moving on to the third chakra which is the solar plexus chakra located just below your rib cage it is also called manipura when we have an unhealthy ego for this chakra then it is an attention seeking ego we are seeking attention but when we have an when we have a healthy ego for this chakra then it is an ego of self acceptance so unhealthy ego attention seeking ego healthy ego self acceptance now let me explain this to you when we are attention seeking when someone is seeking attention all the time when someone is trying to show off what they have you know be it their clothes be it the, the money they have you know be it uh, the fame the power whatever it is that means that this person deep down has self worth issues that's because when i feel lack of sense of self worth then i will try to attract attention right then i will want to prove myself to others there is a beautiful quote by jiddu krishna murthy and he said that the greater the outward show the greater the inward poverty the greater the outward show the greater the inward poverty and that's so true i totally agree with it because the more we try to show off something outside of us it means that we have more deeper problems you know we have severe issues because these issues these lack of sense of self worth issues mostly come from our childhood let's say if i experienced some abandonment or abuse in my childhood let's say nobody gave me importance in my childhood let's say someone left me in my childhood maybe there was a divorce in the family or maybe my parents did not give attention to me or maybe children at school bullied me then what will happen is i will deep down i will feel not important not worthy 
and due to that i will try to cover that up by trying to show off by trying to seek that attention from others i will try to prove myself that i am worthy the more i feel unworthy the more i will try to prove that i am worthy and the more i will show off the more i will try to get fame power and maybe even control others because when i control others i feel powerful right so that is an unhealthy ego to have the healthy ego is the ego of self acceptance in which you say that i accept myself totally as i am that's what having a good sense of self worth is where <clears throat> i'm not trying to prove myself to others i'm not trying to seek that external validation i'm not worried about what others say about me but i totally accept myself the way i am because if i'm trying to seek external validation then i will try to mold myself for others the way others want to see me but if i totally accept myself then i will lead a very authentic life i will be totally in love with myself i will totally accept myself i will accept my flaws and i will realize that i am just a human being and we human beings are supposed to be flawed we are supposed to be imperfect we don't need to try to become flawless try to you know try to just attract attention just try to become that perfect person outside which is not possible to become because all of us have flaws so when i totally accept my flaws when i accept who i am when that's when i have sense of self worth and that's what a healthy ego is the fourth one is for the heart chakra the heart chakra is also called anahata located at the center of your chest the healthy ego for the heart chakra is of self love whereas the unhealthy ego is of selfishness so unhealthy ego selfishness healthy ego self love now there is a difference between selfishness and self love these two are not the same there is a fine line between the two selfishness is when i am ready to harm others for my own benefit selfishness is when i am just too much focused on myself that i don't care if others are getting harmed in the process that's what selfishness is but self love is when i love myself when i take care of myself when i uh you know when i have space my own space and my own time for myself when i spend some time in solitude when i work on myself when i work on my growth on my transformation on my awakening that's what self love is now in the process i'm not harming others but i'm just taking care of myself because i know that you know if i am if i have come to this planet if i am living this life whose responsibility do i have do i have first it is my own responsibility right if i don't take care of myself if i don't love myself how can i love others i cannot give something to others which i don't have i cannot love others if i don't love myself first so that's the first thing to do to love oneself but in the process not harm others when you love yourself first you love yourself but you also help others in the process think about others and take care of others but the first priority is to love yourself so unhealthy ego is of selfishness where i am focused on myself so much that i am holding things i am harming others what a lot of people do but self love is when i am loving myself but i am also loving others but first i am taking care of myself and loving myself next we come to the throat chakra the unhealthy ego for the throat chakra is the ego of abuse whereas the healthy ego is the ego of freedom abuse and freedom now when we have an unhealthy ego when it comes to the throat chakra our throat chakra is our center for expression you know that's how we express we communicate we express who we are through our throat chakra so when i'm using that expression for controlling others for harming others for 
manipulating others. That's the ego, unhealthy ego that I have in which I'm abusing others. And that's what a lot of people do who are good with their expression, right? That's what many politicians do who want to manipulate people because they are good with speaking. That's what a lot of dictators do. That's what these people do who have good expression, but they are abusing, controlling, manipulating others. That's what even, you know, narcissism is all about, where in the family there is someone who is dominant and they are controlling others. But what is a healthy ego when it comes to expression? A healthy ego is the ego of freedom. Where you want your freedom, you want to be a free individual. You, you speak your truth. You express who you are. You have the right to express who you are. You have the right, right to speak the truth. You have the right to wear whatever you want to wear or not wear anything. You have the right to uh, sing, dance, make love. That's your right. You are a free individual. Absolutely. But we do that without harming others again. We do that without controlling others. You just you just live and let live. Basically, that's what ide your ideology is. You are using your voice for your own freedom versus trying to control others. So that's the, the healthy, the unhealthy ego or throat chakra is of abuse. The healthy ego is of freedom. Moving on to the sixth one, which is for the third eye chakra. Our third eye chakra is located right at this point. And it is also called Ajna. Now, our third eye chakra is our connection to our intuition, our sense of intuition. And the unhealthy ego for the third eye chakra is the ego of knowledge, whereas the healthy ego is the ego of wisdom. So knowledge versus wisdom. Now, why do I say that the ego of knowledge is unhealthy? The reason is that knowledge, there is a difference between knowledge and wisdom. And this difference is something which is critical to understand. Knowledge is something which we take from others, which we take from outside, right? When I'm reading books, when I'm studying something in the university, when I'm, you know, learning something from the outside, that's knowledge. Now, I'm not saying knowledge is bad. What I'm saying is to have an ego for knowledge that might not be or to be proud about that knowledge or to show off that knowledge. That might not be the right thing to do because that's just secondhand information I'm getting from someone, right? When I'm studying in the university, when I'm reading books, now I have read all those books, but what I'm doing is I'm getting secondhand information from someone who has written that book. But if I become egoistic about that, which is happening in the society a lot today, and it has been happening for a long time, right? Where I am so proud of myself that I'm a doctor or I'm an engineer or I'm a lawyer or I'm a, you know, philosopher or I'm a... Uh, whatever it is, what, whatever those titles are, whatever those degrees are, or I'm a scientist, uh, whatever those degrees that I have are, if I'm too proud about that, that's an unhealthy ego to have. Why am I proud about that? It is just secondhand information that I'm getting from outside. And I have just mugged up that information and then I'm becoming proud about it. There's nothing to be proud about it. Whereas wisdom might be something more powerful. Wisdom is your own inner intuition speaking to you. Wisdom is something you don't get from outside, but it is your own inner realization, something that comes to you from experience. It is when your, your soul speaks to you, your intuition speaks to you, or something you know about life from your own experience. That's what wisdom is versus knowledge. So having wisdom is something which I prefer more versus knowledge. Because when I'm getting knowledge, it is secondhand information. When I'm, uh, when I'm using my wisdom, that is firsthand. Now, again, that doesn't mean that knowledge is something bad because, you know, you're watching this video, you are getting knowledge, but it is not something bad. 
It's just that once we get that knowledge, it is also important to connect to our own intuition and see whether this is true for me or not. And to also experience that, to also practice that and not just, you know, make it a knowledge thing, but to bring it to our daily lives, to practice it, to make it a part of our experience. That's what wisdom is when it becomes a part of our experience. So wisdom, healthy ego, knowledge, unhealthy ego. And the final one is for the crown chakra located at the top of our head. The crown chakra is also called Sahastrar. And the unhealthy ego for the crown chakra, because the, the crown chakra represents our, our mindfulness, our divinity, our presence. So the unhealthy ego is the ego of stress, whereas the healthy ego is the ego of relaxation, stress versus relaxation. Now, our society has confused productivity and stress has confused productivity with stress because we are as a society attached to stress you know we want to run around we want to be restless we want to just keep pushing ourselves to do things we are and that's why we are create having this society of stress and anxiety if you look at the corporate world, there is so much of running around. There is so much of neglecting one's own mental, emotional and physical health that we create stress. And, you know, that's why we think that when we are stressful, when we are running around, when we are restless, we are being productive. We have made that association. But that's a wrong association. Because now we are understanding, even in the corporate world, that flow states are so important. You know, in the, uh, especially in the corporate world and in the sports industry, people are now talking about flow states. And flow is something which mystics have been talking about throughout ages. Lao Tzu stressed on this. You know, Lao Tzu talked about flow a lot. To live life with flow, to live life with mindfulness, with presence, to relax. The more, in fact, the more you relax, the more you become mindful and present, the more you just breathe and take time to rest, the more productive you will become. You know, that's what the studies are showing now. That's what a flow state is, that you are you are taking out that time for relaxation. You are taking out time to rejuvenate. And once you have relaxed, then automatically you will get that energy to be productive. And then you will be more efficient. So we don't have to be stressful to work. We have to relax. We have to function from a balance, from a flow state rather than stress. So the unhealthy ego is the ego of stress, whereas the healthy ego is of relaxation. So I hope you found value in this talk and I hope you now have a better understanding of what ego death is and what is a healthy ego versus an unhealthy ego. I would be posting more such videos and videos related to this topic, videos related to spirituality. Um, so you can follow me here. You can subscribe to my channel. And if you would like to also meditate with me, I have created a separate channel for meditation. It's called Saka Rizvi Meditation. You can subscribe to that as well. Thank you so much. Lots of love. Namaste.